Summary of Tartuffe by Molière The story starts in the Parisian home of Orgon, a rich middle-class man who has just earned respect by loyally serving the King of France during a civil war. He is on a two-day business trip at the time. It's the first scene, and Orgon's mother, Madame Purnell, has been visiting. She is leaving his daughter Marion, his son Damis, their stepmother Elmire, and her brother Clint. Doreen, Elmire's maid, and Flipote, Madame Purnell's maid, are with them. Madame Purnell scolds each character for their sins as she walks out the door. She only criticizes Elmire because she thinks she is vain and shallow. The whole family of Madame Purnell's son should follow the lessons of Tartuffe, a poor holy man that she and Orgon admire. The rest of the family, on the other hand, thinks, rightly, that Tartuffe is a liar and a fake who cares more about Orgon's money than the real lessons of the church. Madame Purnell, on the other hand, won't say anything bad about Tartuffe. She even threatens that if they don't listen to Tartuffe, people in the neighborhood will start talking about how flirty and expensive Elmire is. There are characters in the play who are more sensible than Clint and Doreen. They say that people will talk no matter what, and that the worst gossips are often also the worst sins. Madame Purnell walks out because she thinks they are making fun of her. But not before hitting her maid, which is not like her to do since she is meant to be religious. After she leaves, Clint and Doreen talk about Tartuffe's problem. They are worried that the liar has full control over Orgon. Elmire, Damis, and Marion come back in and talk about how scared they are about Marion's upcoming wedding to Valir, the man she loves. They think Tartuffe has made Orgon work against them. The fact that this match could fail would make Damis very worried, since he wants to marry Valir's sister. When everyone except Doreen and Clint hears Orgon coming, they all run away. When Orgon gets there, Clint sees for himself how much his brother-in-law is obsessed with Tartuffe, while Doreen tries to tell Orgon about Elmire's recent illness, Orgon keeps asking about Tartuffe's health. Doreen tells Orgon that Tartuffe is greedy and a glutton, but Orgon only says, poor fellow, which is very funny. As soon as Doreen goes, Clint tries to show Orgon how silly he is being. Orgon tries to defend Tartuffe to Clint, but he can't even say what a good person he is, all he can do is say, a man who, a man who, an excellent man. Even so, Orgon says he doesn't care about anything on earth anymore, my mother, children, brother, and wife could die, slash and I'd not feel a single moment's pain. Orgon, who is still trying to persuade Clint, talks about his first meetings with Tartuffe. The phony would loudly and surely pray at church every day to show how kind and religious he was, and he was thrilled about inviting Tartuffe to live with him. Orgon doesn't seem to be sincere, but Clint tries to explain that there is a difference. He begs Orgon to listen to reason and balance. The last thing he does is ask Orgon if he plans to break Marion's engagement to Valir. Orgon, on the other hand, won't answer and walks away. Clint thinks there will be trouble, so he sends Valir a message. Orgon tells Marion at the start of Act 2 that he wants her to marry Tartuffe instead of Valir. Marion is horrified, but she doesn't want to say anything against her father because she is a good daughter. Luckily for her, Doreen walks in and starts making fun of the thought of Marion and Tartuffe getting together. Orgon gets more and more angry as Doreen keeps talking over her, threatening to hit her, and finally trying to do so. But Doreen doesn't give in, and Orgon finally leaves, angry and frustrated. As soon as he leaves, Doreen scolds Marion for not standing up for herself. Doreen tells Marion to fight back, but Marion says she can't go against her father. She tells Marion that she doesn't really love him if she doesn't fight to marry Valir. She says this because there is a difference between making claims of love and love itself. Marion says she will kill herself if she has to marry Tartuffe, but Doreen replies with sarcasm, calling Marion a softy. Marion replies that anything else would not be proper for a girl, and Doreen tells her that she must really want to marry Tartuffe. Doreen will only agree to help Marion marry Valir, who has just shown up, which is very convenient after Marion begs her to. When the two lovers meet, Marion won't say that she will stand up to her father, which causes a big split between them. 
each tries to hurt the other in a stupid and emotional way. Only when Doreen physically pulls them back towards each other and makes them hold hands does the silly fight end. They then repeat their love vows. Doreen, who has to separate them now, is amazed at how crazy loves can be. At the start of Act 3, Doreen has to deal with another dramatic member of Orgon's family, Damis, who has made the mistake of going up against Tartuffe directly. Doreen tells him to let Elmire handle Tartuffe because the maid has seen that the holy man has an odd crush on the wife of his client. In that room, Elmire and Tartuffe are about to talk, she tells Damis. Damis then wants to hear what they have to say. Doreen hides him in a room and tells him not to lose it because she is tired of him. Tartuffe comes in for the first time in the play. When he sees Doreen, he calls to his helper and ostentatiously asks for his hair shirt and whip to hurt and supposedly cleanse his body. Doreen laughs at this show and keeps making fun of Tartuffe in front of him while he tells her to cover her breasts with a towel so as not to make him think of immoral things. He is much easier to talk to, though, when he hears that Elmire wants to talk to him. Doreen wisely notes this before leaving. As soon as Elmire walks in, Tartuffe lavishes praise on her and says that he has been praying for her non-stop. Elmire politely accepts his compliments, which make her sick, and then tries to change the subject to Marion and Valir's match. But Tartuffe doesn't agree. He plans to use this time alone with Elmire to tell her he loves her. Tartuffe invades Elmire's personal space by touching her knee, grabbing her hand, and even the lace collar of her dress. He then blasphemously tells her that he worships her as if she were holy, when in reality he only wants to be with her for pleasure. When Elmire asks Tartuffe what he would do if she told her husband what he said, he says that he knows her kindness will cover up his bad words. In turn, Elmire tries to get Tartuffe to back Valir in Marion's marriage by keeping quiet. But Damis foils her plan by coming out of hiding and being happy that he finally has proof that Tartuffe betrayed Orgon. Elmire tells her stepson to be quiet, but as soon as Orgon walks in, Damis tells everyone that Tartuffe is guilty. Tartuffe doesn't try to deny it. He keeps up his good behavior, which makes Orgon more and more angry, not at his traitorous friend, but at his own son. As Tartuffe keeps blaming himself, Orgon turns totally against Damis, insulting and threatening him, kicking him out of the house, and finally kicking him out of the family. To get Orgon to beg him to stay at the house, Tartuffe acts like he is shocked and upset by what has happened. Orgon then says that Tartuffe should spend all of his time with Elmire and refuses Tartuffe's offer to stay away from Elmire for moral reasons. Orgon is furious at his family because he thinks they are working together to hurt Tartuffe. He then says that he will marry Marion to Tartuffe and will give all of his land, property, and money to him that very day to show how strong their bond is. They leave to write up the crime. Act 4 starts after some time has passed. Clint comes to tell Tartuffe that the whole town is talking about Orgon's fight with Damis. He asks Tartuffe to help them get along again, but Tartuffe says no. Then, they argue about what is right and wrong. Clint uses sensible, rational reasons, while Tartuffe uses emotional arguments that are easy to manipulate. Tartuffe gets up to go pray just as he is about to lose the fight. As soon as he leaves, Elmire, Marion, and Doreen come in and beg Clint to help stop Marion and Tartuffe from getting married. Next, Orgon walks in and tells Marion to be happy about her upcoming wedding to his friend. Even though her father is touched for a moment, she begs to be able to live in a convent instead of marrying Tartuffe. But he won't listen to her or Clint. Elmire finally steps in and asks Orgon how he can do such a thing after Tartuffe tried to seduce him. Her husband tells her that she would be even more angry if Tartuffe had really done that. Elmire asks her husband if she can show him proof of Tartuffe's bad deal. She is cool and collected. Orgon doesn't believe it at all and is skeptical, but he agrees that she can give it a try. As she hides her husband under a table and sends the rest of her family away, Elmire calls Tartuffe and claims to return his love, telling him that she used to be too ashamed to show it but can't anymore. Tartuffe, who is always wanting and grabbing, tells her that she needs to show her love with something sexual. 
He also tells her that their possible relationship won't be a mistake and that he will keep their relationship a secret. Elmire waits, and then he sends Tartuffe out of the room to look for people who are listening in. When Tartuffe comes back, Orgon is shocked and angry and scolds him for trying to marry his daughter and steal his wife. When he kicks Tartuffe out of the house, Tartuffe replies with the worst possible threat, since his old friend signed over his land and properties, the liar can now throw Orgon and his family out. He swears to do it and to punish Orgon for betraying him before leaving. If Elmire asks him what he means, Orgon only talks about a strange and scary safe that was in Tartuffe's room. At the start of Act 5, Clint has come back to help his family through a tough time. Orgon tells his wise brother-in-law that the strongbox in question used to belong to his friend Ergus, who betrayed the king, and that having it would be considered treason. Of course, Orgon agreed to keep it for Ergus, but he then gave it to Tartuffe to keep safe. Clint is horrified by this choice, and he tells Orgon again that he should take a path of balance instead of an extreme one. Damis also comes back and offers to kill Tartuffe for his father, but Clint is against this plan too. Madame Purnell, Elmire, Marion, and Doreen are the next women to come in. The family tries to convince Madame Purnell that Tartuffe is betraying them, but she doesn't believe them until Tartuffe sends a sheriff named Monsieur Loyal to the house to kick Orgon and his family out by the next morning. The sheriff is scared off by the family and has to leave, but Valir quickly follows him because he heard that Tartuffe showed the king what was in the safe and the king has decided to arrest Orgon. As Orgon gets ready to run away with the help of Valir and Clint, Tartuffe and the officer walk in and say they have come to arrest Orgon. His family makes fun of him, but it doesn't help. The only way out is for the officer to say that he is not there to arrest Orgon but Tartuffe. He then says that liars like Tartuffe can't fool the king and that he knew right away that the con artist was a normal, vicious criminal. The king has thrown out the title and given Orgon back his land and property as a thank you for his service. The king's kindness makes the family happy, and Orgon tells them that Marion and Valir will soon be married. About the author Moliere was an artist who was both an actor and a writer. He had a lot of success during his lifetime, but he also had to deal with a lot of prejudice. Even though Moliere's fans and the public loved his sharp, satirical works, the French government and the Catholic Church didn't like them. In fact, the authorities banned some of them, including Tartuffe. Even though Moliere came from a rich family, the French thought that being a theater actor was a shameful job. The writer was even jailed for his theater company's debts. Moliere got tuberculosis when he was young, and he fell on stage in his own play, The Imaginary Invalid, when he was 51 years old. He insisted on finishing the show, but he died later that night. No matter how well known he was, as an actor he was legally not allowed to be buried on holy ground. The king had to step in and help the playwright's family bury him at night in a church tomb. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.